Is this new Sony A93 really worth purchasing if you're only gonna use it for video? Let's get into it. So basically this video is all about the A93 from a video perspective exclusively. So we're gonna ignore that the thing even shoots stills at all. There's a couple of ergonomic things that I think are really helpful. One is that the record button um, is where your thumb can more easily reach it. On the Alpha 1, it was really hard to get to. Uh, I just hate that thing. It's, you have to jam it into the corner between the, the back of the EVF and the side of the camera, and it's like really scrunched in there. So I, I never liked that. The buttons generally are larger and more tactile all the way around. So if you have to shoot uh, video outdoors in the cold, um, this is gonna be a much easier camera to manipulate uh, with gloves on. Similar to what came on the A7R5 and now on the A7C2 and the A7CR, there's now a switch under the mode dial for changing between stills, video, and slow and quick mode. Really cool. You cannot bump this switch accidentally. It's not possible. I've tried. Doesn't work. Like all the new cameras from the last two to three years, the power source, the easiest power source to use is the USB-C outlet in the camera. And remember that that outlet is constantly powering the battery. It's constantly putting a charge in the battery. So as you use the camera with the battery installed, you're, even if you lose power, the camera's still gonna roll because even if you disconnect the USB-C cord, the battery's still gonna go. So even if you interrupt power during a big shoot, like in a long form situation, it's not gonna matter, which is really helpful. The four axis back screen is wonderful. It's the same exact screen that's on the A7, A7R5. We are all hoping that Sony will just adopt that and make that the normal screen for every camera from now on. It would be wonderful if, if they did that. One of the great things about that screen and how you can manipulate the back screen to wherever you want it is um, we don't all have the same gimbal. And different gimbals are have the expose on the left or the right side of the camera, depending on who makes it. And so no matter what, you can always find a place where that screen's gonna make sense uh, because of its ability to move around, which is really cool. Of course, the A93 has a full-size HDMI, which we all love. The camera has eight stops of image stabilization, which is excellent. There's been a lot of stuff on the internet about the base ISO uh, for the A93, and the reality is that the base ISO on still side is 250 ISO, but the base ISO on the video side is actually 2000 ISO. A lot of people miss that. The big, huge you know, elephant in the room is the global shutter. Um, it's a astounding feat of engineering that they have, that they have completed. This is not an APS-C sensor with a global shutter, it's a full frame sensor. This is not a front side illuminated sensor with a global shutter. It's not a back side illuminated sensor with a global shutter. It is a stack sensor with a global shutter. I mean, it's astounding what they have done. They've pushed out so far ahead of really any competitor, it's, it's breathtaking, the technical advance of this camera. Um, I mean, they have basically, with a consumer product sold under the DI line of Sony, they now have a camera that easily competes with RED because the Komodo is only APS-C with a global shutter, but it's not a, it's not a stack sensor. <laughs> so it's really an astounding feat of engineering what they've done. They have really thrown down the gauntlet in many, in multiple categories of the photographic industry and the video industry. Of course, the huge benefits of global shutter are that there is virtually no distortion, even with quick pans. If you were like panning really fast, it is going to track and give you distortion free, no jello. Another thing that's really, really significant is there's no, there's no banding. So if you're shooting sports a lot and there's like Dactronic ribbon boards in the background, if you shoot pro soccer anywhere in the world, this is a terrible problem uh, because all the video you see and all the stills have these horrific, nasty artifacts in the, on, the, on the LED boards. This camera will see them as the normal eye sees them. And so it's just a pure way. Same thing with flicker. So there's not gonna be all this weird kind of roving color that's kind of moving up and down along the frame as you're shooting. It's so frustrating. This is the most pure way to shoot under any lighting conditions whatsoever. 
Um, so Global Shutter is a monstrous leap forward. It's not a step at all. They put the same exact EVF quality, 9.44 mil dot, into the EVF of the Sony A93. And this is a huge deal. The other thing that's really significant is the, the viewfinder stays at that resolution even at 120 and 240 frames for the refresh rate of the EVF. What this means is you can track extremely fast moving objects and people. Um, I'm thinking about downhill skiing, uh, I'm thinking about luge, I'm thinking about speed skating. Um, there's many different things, but um, you're gonna be able to track auto racing for sure. You're gonna be able to track and keep whatever it is that's in the frame in the right part of the frame that you want. Sometimes things get really messy when you're using an EVF as opposed to an optical viewfinder because you can't track exactly, you can't compose on the fly. This camera is going to allow you to compose on the fly no problem. So at 2430 and 60 frames per second, this camera is going to be shooting 6K and then sampling down to 4K. So the quality at 2430 and 60P is going to be astounding. The really remarkable thing is that you can actually shoot at 120p with this camera without any cropping in the viewfinder. Now there's a little bit of a caveat there, and that is that in order to do that, to process all that, uh, that information, they use pixel binning to do it. So this is a pixel binning free camera up until you get to 120p. But in the past, you know, the, the, the Sony's pixel binning is excellent. So, I would much rather have pixel binning and not have to change lenses uh, because of the crop uh, change. So this is a huge deal. It's going to really help people in production. Um, it just, it's just great. I mean, it's a really, really good deal. Most people that shoot video are still doing it with Canon glass, which I don't understand. I mean, I guess if you already have it and all that stuff. But the autofocus abilities of the Sony glass on a Sony camera to shoot video is phenomenal but it's made a huge improvement by, with the tracking on feature, which is resident in the Alpha 9.3. What tracking on allows you to do is to leave altogether the touch focus on the back screen, and it allows you to continue to use um, tracking autofocus just like you would with a still camera, which means you can have a little center indicator in the middle of the frame when you look in the EVF. You can hit a player, say a running back, and then hold down the AF on button, and it will track only that player while you now can recompose the frame. Uh, and it will track that player even if, it's, if, if the guy runs behind defenders. So the tracking abilities of the A93 are going to be pretty awesome. And by the way, that same tracking on feature is in the a, A7R5, it's in the A6700 even, it's in the A7C Mark II, and the A7CR. So basically every new camera that comes out, they're gonna give you that tracking on feature. Sadly, it is not in the Alpha 1, it's not in the A7S 3 where we'd really need it. So if you've always wanted to shoot longer glass with uh, video, uh, it is now possible to do that with the tracking on feature, even with the 400GM, the 600GM, and of course, probably the most popular lens to do it with will be the 328 because it's hand holdable. You don't even need a monopod, it's incredible. If you want to know more about tracking on, uh, check this link right here and it'll send you to videos that I've made on the same subject. Of course, the A93 has 422 10-bit color um, and that's at 24p, 30p, 120p, and even up to all I. The A93 is able to shoot up to 16-bit raw with an external recorder and that's up to 60p, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Of course, it has S-Log and S Cinetone, like everything does with Sony now. Of course, the A93 is a pro camera, so it's weather sealed to a much higher degree than many of the alpha cameras that have preceded it. You can shoot up to 1 8,000th of a second in video mode. Uh, so if you love to overcrank, you can overcrank the bejesus out of your footage here. It's pretty cool. So on the still side, the camera has 759 autofocus points, but when you squeeze the frame down to 16.9 from the 2.3 proportion, you end up with 627 uh, phase detect autofocus points, which is plenty. It covers the entire area. It's, it's all good. It works great. Of course, the camera weighs 1.4 pounds with a battery and card media in it, which is 617 grams if you are coming from a different country than the U.S.
a lot of videographers don't even know that they, they make vertical grips for these cameras, but if you're doing long form stuff and you don't want to use the USB cards, the USB-C slot, you can use two batteries, two Z batteries in the grip, the vertical grip. Now, if you're gonna be on a gimbal, you probably don't want the added weight or bulk, but if you're shooting long glass, for instance, in nature or something like that, and you're shooting video at high, high speeds, birds in flight or something like that, the grip is a really great way to go. Also, when you combine two batteries, the grip and the camera are wired differently than any set before. And what happens is the, each frame that's fired is alternating batteries. By alternating the batteries and not draining them one fully and then going to the next one, it allows you to have 15% more energy stored, or, which will equate to more minutes of being able to capture video. So it's kind of a cool feature. The grip is really a neat thing. If you've never tried one, it might be worth renting sometime. I guess in summation, it's important to say that the Sony A93 represents a radical change to the entire photographic and video camera industry. For Sony to come out of nowhere with a full frame uh, stacked global shutter sensor is pretty insane. Um, a lot of people have complained about the price of the camera at six grand, but like really, this is a deal at ten or twelve thousand um, dollars because there's no real competitor to it. Um, it's just a really amazing feat of engineering that they've done here. It's a huge mic drop for Sony, especially on the video side. It's a revolutionary change in technology as it pertains to how we capture video and what size the machine has to be in order to do stuff. So going forward, uh, you know, you just have to have your hats off to Sony that they created this camera and made it as small and lightweight as they could. Uh, it's just an amazing feat of engineering and uh, I, I'm still stunned by it even weeks after the launch. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. Mm -hmm.